to Silicon Valley and perhaps look at this project in a little more detail. Um, how does one reconcile this image of Silicon Valley with the first meeting with Steve Jobs, where he describes this as the fruit bowl, bowl of America in his youth? And uh, with an awareness that one of Steve's kind of uh, extraordinary uh, abilities was always a meeting was a walk, and ideally a walk in the, in, in the country. So how could one uh, translate that in, in terms of a, of a project? And this was the site, and the statistics of that site, uh, and here we see the superimposition of the very familiar circle of a building, the key statistics, I guess, at the bottom there is that half of that site is covered in asphalt and there's very little landscaping. And in its final transformation, there's virtually no tarmac and everything is about the landscape. Now, the interesting thing about this image is also 30% more people on that site. Um, and what appears to be a very large building, and physically it most certainly is, but you have to compare this with a multiplicity of individual buildings. And you don't get the scale from this aerial view. If I was to put you into the heart of that circle, then the building becomes a kind of horizon. And here you see the recreation of that California landscape. If you move outside of that circle to the landscape, the, the other side of the ring, then it becomes very much an incident in the landscape. It's not the only building. There is the Steve Jobs Theater, and the Steve Jobs Theater is almost like a kind of flying saucer in the, in the landscape. Um, it's quite massive, that roof. It's about 80 tons, and it literally sits on a glass wall, a glass curtain, and in the joints between the glass, the services, the electricity, is almost invisibly fed up. So that's a kind of celebration of, of space, of liberation, with this <coughs> structural circle of glass around it. That same use of reflective glass to kind of harmonize with nature uh, these eyebrows are in part of the facade providing shading, but they're also bouncing light deep into the heart of the building. And that external wall virtually disappears. And here you can see the underside of that, which is reflecting that landscape and bringing it in. If I talk about the fusion of the social dimension and also the technology and the quest for a healthier building, then at the top of that sheet of glass, here we see the junction. And you start to see the movement of air. And that controls the flow of air. There are also filters in terms of uh, dust or insects, uh, although it's a very uh, extraordinary, benign California climate. So working with that climate. A lot of the things over the period that I'm describing here, which is some 50 years or a little more, um, been driven by the very subjective idea that if you have uh, a relationship to nature, if you have natural light, if you have a good view, if you have a changing climate which changes with the seasons, uh, then it will be it will be healthier, but that's always been very subjective until 2016, and here you see um, the uh, the test bed that enabled the Harvard School of Public Health to quantify the benefits of a green building, a normal building, or a super green building. And what the people at the upper level who were doing various kinds of tests, mental tests and so on, uh, didn't know is that the plant room below was changing the environment to simulate the conditions of these different buildings. And um, here, in a nutshell, are some of those findings. But the three 
uh, the three kind of critical peaks, crisis response, use of information, and processing that for strategy, scientifically proves something which over many decades was very subjective. 